Hello everyone, thank you for joining us to this symposium. On this day, we will be discussing the credibility and the field verification approach to restoration projects in the search of a structured protocol for evaluating restoration activities at the field level and the environmental and social impacts of restoration projects, which is a problem that needs to be addressed in order for the project developers and restoration investors can increase the chances of success on their projects. My name is Hernan Saldivar, a specialist in ecosystem restoration in by nature. Today, I'm joined with Richard Donovan, who will be joining us at the final of the presentation. Preferred by Nature is an NGO founded in 1994 in Denmark. We work with businesses, NGOs, and governments on developing solutions to major global changes, such as deforestation and climate change. Now, we're going to start talking a little bit about the ecosystem restoration standard by Preferred by Nature. The objective of this standard is to set the implementation of the ecosystem restoration activities at the field level. This document provides a practical standard for field verification of performance in implementing ecosystem restoration, where the restoration is technically, environmentally, socially, and economically appropriate. This standard has four key elements. was designed to the audit performance at any scale, small to large and any point of ongoing restoration projects in tropical, temperate, and boreal biomes. The small projects are considered those restoring a fewer than 100 hectares, and the large projects are defined as being created like at 10,100 hectares. And the medium-sized projects are between the two, uh, between small and big projects. Also, projects managed by communities are also grouped with small projects and together refer to as smallholders and community projects. The ecosystem restoration may include use of techniques such as management of natural forests, agroforestry, uh, conservation agriculture, reforestation, participatory management, impact logging, and rewilding. Priority is placed on use of native species but also allowing the use of alien species where you, the, the use of these alien species provide a nursing or similar qualities leading towards to re-establishment of the natural forest cover or ecosystem functions. The standard can be used for first party, second party, or third party evaluation or audits of performance. The hectare threshold for large scale and small operation may be adjusted based on the geography or correspondence size limits, requirements in certification systems or another accountability tools which may use in parallel with this verification tool. There is scientific evidence connecting more effective forest stewardship with indigenous traditional peoples and local communities, usually attributed to their active participation in forest governance. Their direct benefits for forest products and desire to maintain their resource for future regeneration. The proposed approach creates a series of core and continuous improvements. Core improvements means those which shall be assessed and verified in every situation, with positive performance at the field level considered crucial and required all in all the cases. The continuous improvement indicators mean partial success in implementation is acceptable if credible field level progress is evident. The ecosystem restoration standard by Graffaita in Asia has four different uh, parts. Like you see in the screen, the first one is the planification stage, which have seven indicators. One of these seven indicators one of the most important indicators is the restoration plan. This restoration plan needs to be aligned to effectively reverse the degradation condition and recognize, manage, or restore the characteristics and value in the file. When it is applicable, in this restoration plan, need to be described the plan selection for this, this, uh, for this project. The restoration plan need to describe the expected environmental and social impacts of the project, including potential harm and unaided consequences and how the restoration effort is addressing them. The restoration plan 
need be documented in handwriting. And of course, we aim to this restoration plan indeed include a, continu a continuation strategy. The second part of the standard is regarding to tenure right and engagement. In this part, the restoration manager shall use culturally sensitive engagement taking in consideration the social and economic dynamics to ensure that affected stakeholders are transparently and effectively consulted and engagement with all inclusive manner in the restoration planning, implementation and monitoring aware of the expected actions and benefits. The restoration manager shall support transparent and inclusive participation of affected parties when making decisions on action that will impact on clear impl implications on the landscape beyond the project boundaries. The relevant part of the engagement process should be documented, including in all agreed commitments of resources, labors, and responsibility for action by all involved individuals and parties and organizations. The third part of the standard is about the implementation part. In the implementation part, we address the environmental issues and of course, one of the most important things in the restoration project, that is the social issues. In the, in the social part, the standard uh, address the local labor like a priority on the on, on the standard and also it's important to make be clear about the workers right and any implementation of the on this project it's very important to be clear that it's not allowed it's not permitted a child labor in the pro, in the in the restoration project is not allowed to force our compulsory labor. No discrimination of any kind in the, in the restoration project is permitted under our standard. The project need be addressed and need be allowed the equal remuneration regarding the gender on the on the sperm and the on the project. Is forbidding abusive practice or only disciplinary procedures. Is the standard look um, uh, looking for better working conditions for the for the labor for the labor in the in the restoration projects. The occupational work and health and safety will occur in accordance with local and legal and permit requirements, including safe the use of equipment or consistent use of personal protective protective equipment. The final part of the standard is regarding monitoring, and I think it's one of the most important things of this standard because, in our experience around the world, because this standard was testing in more than 10 countries in different continents, we see the monitoring of the outcome of the standards is one of the main struggle issues for the monitoring for their ecosystem restoration projects. The monitoring of the outcomes and the adaptive management, one of the two more important things about when we're talking about the monitoring in our standard. For example, the planting and sealing or natural regeneration need be monitored annually, including survival rights, health, for example, pests and diseases, and in a technical fashion sound, including practical, consistent, and transparent and repeatable, and repeatable actions. All these actions need to be taken for continuous improvement based on monitoring outcomes evident at the field level. And finally, when we're talking about adaptive management, it's important that the monitoring results are compiled annually and used to enhance achievement of the restoration targets, goals, and objectives to improve the activities of the restoration project in the following years. Now, I will leave you with my colleague Richard with the final comments of the restoration standard by Preferred by Nature. Thank you.
Hey there, this is Richard Donovan, Independent Forest Advisor, and I've been working with Hernan Zaldivar and Mateo Carino and others at Preferred by Nature over the last three years on the verification standard for restoration, ecosystem restoration, that Hernan has just presented to you. Um, it has been a very interesting process. We've gone through multiple drafts. We've sought input from all of the restoration initiatives that we could communicate with, as many as were practical. We've done field tests, as Hernan has probably explained, in temperate and tropical regions, multiple countries. The emphasis of the standard has always been on the practical aspects. So we've been lucky in that uh, we have a lot of people that have been open to testing the standard because they were thinking about their own monitoring, reporting, and verification systems. The results of those field tests have been very positive in general. People feel that the language in the standard is fairly direct and written in language that practitioners understand. We've tried to be practical throughout. We've tried to be open-minded as to what type of restoration intervention you might use this standard to work with. So we've made sure to include the key elements of planning, tenure rights, customary and indigenous, engagement with both rights holders and sta other stakeholders, particularly those directly affected. We've worked on implementation of key concepts like high conservation values or rare threatened endangered species, free prior and informed consent on the social side, as well as, of course, the landscape or ecological context in which the restoration is happening. And finally, something that we place emphasis on is trying to put, in, put indicators in there that cover aspects of monitoring and adaptive management. Ultimately, our goal is that these be durable certifications, durable restorations, Maybe they'll be certified in the future under some system, but our primary emphasis has been for first, second, and third party reporting of all kinds. So that the main thing is that there's a way of being accountable and reporting with accuracy. We've been very open to all the kinds of different systems that are out there for restoration, as I mentioned before, with an emphasis, yes, on tree planting when that's appropriate, but also things like agroforestry, rewilding, assisted natural regeneration and regeneration, and ecosystem management. We don't expect any standard will be perfect, but we hope that you'll find this one useful and look forward to working with you in any way we can to help you with your efforts going forward on restoration globally. Let's make this UN Decade restoration successful. Thank you.